It's been a while since I've done a distro review, and today I'm gonna to be looking at one that several of you have requested me to take a look at, and that is Garuda Linux. Now, this is another Arch-based GNU slash Linux distribution that many people are actually saying is the best Arch-based distro that's out there right now, which is a pretty big claim considering just how many Arch-based distros are floating around out there. And you can download the distribution and also get more information about it at garudalinux.org. Now, let's just take a moment to admire this website. It looks really clean. It looks really modern. And it also doesn't rely too heavily on JavaScript. So if you do want to block scripts in your browser for whatever reason, the website is still pretty much going to function the same way. Another thing I really like is that here at the top of their page, one of the first few links that they have uh, takes you to the download page. So that's great. I always love when different Linux distro sites actually take me to the page that I want to go to right away to actually download the ISO uh, and get started with it. Now, at the top of this page, we have the minimum requirements listed out, and we can see that it wants us to have 30 gigabytes of storage space, four gigabytes of RAM, a video card with OpenGL 3.3 or better, and a 64-bit system. So this is definitely not a minimalist GNU Linux distro. It's more meant to be a just works distro that also has a lot of eye candy and looks really modern. I would say that this is more the type of Linux distribution that maybe newbies are going to use who are looking for an alternative to running Windows 10. Uh, so if you're looking for a distribution to run on an old ThinkPad, you might not want to go with this, but if you had something like a gaming laptop or desktop with eight gigabytes or more of RAM and a quad core processor and a fairly new graphics card, uh, and you wanted to run GNU Linux on it, then Garuda is going to be a really good choice for that. Um, now, we also have the installation procedure here, which I think is pretty useful because, again, this is probably something uh, that people newer to Linux are going to use and maybe they don't know how to go into their BIOS and uh, boot from a flash drive. So that's really good. Uh, now, if we scroll down a bit more, uh, we can start seeing the different flavors of Garuda that they have. So like they have a KDE edition, XFCE, uh, GNOME. Uh, LXQTK Win and also a Wayfire, which is a um, using Wayland. But this is the most popular one, and also why they listed it first: uh, the Garuda KDE Dragonized, spelled with Leet Speak. So really cool. This is the one that I'm going to be showing off in a virtual machine, uh, and they also have a couple special editions of it. So they have the um, KDE Dragonized Gaming Edition, uh, which comes with some additional software that GNU Linux gamers would really like, like Steam, uh, Lutris, Wine, and the Glorious Egg Roll Custom Proton Settings. Uh, there's also the KDE Dragonized uh, Black Arch Edition, so this is going to be sort of like Kali Linux. This is going to be, uh, in case you didn't know, Black Arch is basically a penetration testing distro that's based on Arch. It actually has even more tools in it than Kali Linux does. Um, so yeah, this is sort of like Black Arch, but I guess uh, for people that don't want to run, uh, I, I can't even remember what window manager Black Arch uh, comes with, but it's a very minimalist version. So this is, I guess, a just works pen testing edition, sort of like uh, Kali Linux or the Parrot security, but this is Garuda's version of it. And finally, another thing that I like is that all of these different distributions uh, you have the option of downloading it via a torrent, which is definitely the way uh, that I would prefer to download my Linux distros. So that is really cool. All right, so this is the first screen that you'll get when you first try to boot up uh, Garuda Linux. I'm using it in a virtual machine, and just as a brief aside, uh, they actually mention on the Garuda website to not run it in a virtual machine because certain things are not going to work correctly. Uh, now that's perfectly fine for me because I'm just booting this up and I'm going to be showing some of the features of it. Um, I'm not expecting it to work super fast, certainly not as fast in a VM 
as it would on bare metal. But just keep that in mind if you were thinking of actually using it uh, in a virtual machine for some reason. Uh, so we have the option of booting with either open source drivers uh, or to boot allowing uh, the proprietary NVIDIA drivers. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I am using NVIDIA, an NVIDIA graphics card, uh, and frankly, the open source drivers for NVIDIA really suck because NVIDIA doesn't give that development team any help at all like AMD does. They don't make it uh, easy for people to develop open source drivers uh, for NVIDIA. Hopefully I can go ahead and switch to an AMD card just as soon as they're actually available. All right, so we are here in the initial setup. Uh, one thing that I do really like that I just noticed right away is uh, whenever you click on an application, it sort of blurs your desktop background to, I guess, focus it. Um, so yeah, this is the kind of, you know, this is a KDE thing. Uh, and this is kind of what I was talking about and why it's really not a minimalist distro is because they do a lot of eye candy stuff like this, which again, this is perfectly fine if you're using a modern machine, uh, but if you're using something really old, like maybe a Core 2 Duo, you might not really want to run this. Um, so uh, let's see what we got. So we can, of course, uh, explore Garuda a bit, but why don't we just go ahead and install it? Um, we have this welcome screen. So let's see, is the installer here? We've got Garuda Assistant, Garuda Settings Manager, um, System Cleaner. Okay, here it is. Install Garuda Linux. Uh, oh, and it also looks like there's an install right there. All right, so this is a just works distro. So installing is just as simple as reading the instructions on the screen. So we'll make it American English, best kind of English there is. Uh, sure, New York is close enough. Um, got English, we got default, keyboard. Um, yeah, let's erase the disk. And I won't use any swap. Um, you could set up swap here if you wanted to. Um, I guess that's good that they don't necessarily give you swap because I, I guess they're assuming that people are going to be installing this on machines with like 8 GB, 16 GB, and... Maybe you don't need swap if you've got that much uh, RAM, but you know, let's not have a whole big debate about swap. Uh, so yeah, we'll do our password. And I also like that they don't force you to use like eight character or more passwords. I mean, I get that uh, it's more secure to do that, but I don't like being forced to use long passwords. Um, yeah. All of this looks good, so it's just giving us like an overview of what we're gonna do for setup. Um, this could probably be better. It's like black on black and kind of difficult to read. It says unpartitioned space or unknown partition table. And let's go ahead and install now. Yeah, I mean, relatively painless thing to install. I mean, pretty, pretty easy to set up, but that's how just works distros work for you. Um, let's see, they see we're only focused on performance. Yeah, so, so when I was reading up about this, it basically looks like they're kind of marketing this as almost like a gaming distro. And not necessarily just for gaming, it's not like, you know, Steam OS where it's almost like a console type of setup. Uh, this is probably for the person who might be doing some work on their computer, you know, maybe office work or something like that, but they also want to do some gaming. Uh, I, I would say it's almost like a Windows replacement, right? Because, uh, of course, on pretty much any Linux distro, you can, you can game, but there's a lot of work that goes into uh, getting Steam set up, getting it set up with Proton, and then especially if you want to do um, like Proton GE, that's something where you literally have to go and download it from GitHub and then you have to put the folders into Steam and all of that can be very, very intimidating. If you're new to Linux or even if you're just new to computers in general, I mean, how many Windows users are doing that kind of stuff, right? Maybe if you're someone who knows how to install mods, because uh, then you're sort of going into game files and, and putting things in different places. but how many gamers use mods, right? It's it's a small percentage of the community. So I really like that they're trying to make this really easy uh, for gamers. I'm probably gonna have to get 
maybe a gaming laptop. I think one of my friends might have one that I can borrow and try to install uh, Garuda to that just to see how smoothly it it is to do that and how easy it is to actually get gaming uh, with Garuda. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording now while this finishes installing. All right, so the installation is finished. Only took about 10 minutes or so, but I noticed uh, while it was installing that I only had one processor um, passed for my uh, virtual machine. So I'm going to go ahead and actually give it uh, another processor. Let's see, how can I shut this down? Here we go. Yeah, you can see it's it's lagging quite a bit. So definitely need to give it like two or three cores. Okay, we are rebooted now with three threads provided. Uh, let's go ahead and log in. Um, let's see, it's asks us, do you want to start the setup assistant to finish your installation? Uh, sure, I don't think I'm really gonna install anything additional, but let's just go through this. Uh, we'll go ahead and update the system, um, and then this is where it's going to select uh, some other packages. So I guess by default, it's not really installing too, too many packages. Um, but yeah, let's go through this and see what we need. Do we need additional fonts? Nah. Printer scanner support? Nope. Uh, don't need extra wallpapers. Don't need additional components. Um, so then software centers, GNOME firmware, uh, app image launcher, um, Pac-Man, oh, I guess that's the GUI software center. So maybe by, oh, PAMAC. Okay, my uh, dyslexia was kicking in there. Yeah, that's right. That's the um, GUI front end for Pac-Man. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And let's see, Octopi, oh, QT GUI software center. All right, and then we also have um, Discover, which is the one for KDE. So yeah, lots of different software centers um, that you can select. Uh, additional kernels. By default, this is using the Zen kernel, which is uh, better for game gaming. It's pretty much one of the more like responsive uh, kernels for that type of workload, uh, which again, just more evidence that this is supposed to be sort of a gaming distro. Um, Office Suite. So yeah, here you can choose uh, LibreOffice, and that's the one that's recommended, the full-featured Office Suite. Um, but then you can also choose for things like free office if you want. Um, browsers, so wow, this is a pretty, th this is a lot of different browsers. So we can get LibreWolf, um, Firefox, Firefox ESR, Chromium, ungoogle Chromium, uh, Vivaldi, Opera, even the Tor browser. Pretty much every browser, Brave is here. Pretty much everything that you could possibly want. Um, I'm not seeing Surf though. <laughs> Uh, I mean, they have some other, uh, I guess, kind of more obscure browsers like Otter and SeaMonkey, but they don't have Surf. I mean, why not? Why not include a minimalist browser there? Okay, so for mail clients, uh, Thunderbird, Kmail. Yeah, again, lots of different mail clients you get to choose. Uh, communication software, all right. So Telegram, Discord, again, you're gonna need that if you're gaming. Uh, NeoChat, Fractal, Element, wow, they got a lot on here, Wire, Signal, uh, Jitsi Meet, Zoom, Skype, and they point out that they're both proprietary as well as uh, Microsoft Teams and Slack, even Mumble and the Twitch GUI, wow, so many options. Uh, more communication software, uh, audio software, yeah, pretty much everything that you would want there. Video software, um, VLC, KDN Live. Okay, but I'm not seeing, they got OBS, but I'm not seeing MPV. I'm also not seeing Blender since video editors are uh, being mentioned here. Um, I don't see, sh oh yeah, Shotcut is there, okay. Yeah, so there's definitely some things missing from here. They should have MPV. Oh, I just noticed the little, the little wiggle of that box. That's pretty cool. All right, let's see. Graphics software. So GIMP is here. MyPaint. Um, lots of other ones that I've never even used. Uh, Krita is here. 
all the apps, uh, multimedia software. Okay, maybe Blender is in here. Let's see, they got Handbrake. Um, still not seeing Blender though, or um, KDN Live. They got Easy Tag. That's a nice little um, audio editor tool. Really useful if you want to add like um, album information or artist information to songs you might have downloaded from YouTube DL. Um, extra games. Don't need extra games. Uh, development software. Okay, so you can get Visual Studio Code, um, GNU Emacs. I'm not seeing Vim, so hopefully Vim is already installed on here. Uh, virtualization software, Vert Manager, VirtualBox, everything you could want is there. And then just other software. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and remove the setup assistant because I guess we don't need it anymore. And yeah, all of this, I mean, like you just saw, I didn't need to use a terminal to install or in this case, skip installing any of that. Like it's a just works distro. It's going to be really easy to use and you probably won't even have to touch the terminal too often. Uh, so yeah, if you're thinking about using Linux, but the terminal scares you, this may be a good distro for you to use. Um, and then we have a nice little welcome screen. So let's see what's through here. So Garuda Assistant, um, isn't that what we were just using? Oh no, this is something different. Oh, okay, so this is sort of like your control panel, I guess. So we've got a uh, system update. Uh, you can reinstall all packages. So I guess you do that if your system's broken. Refresh the mirror list, refresh the key rings, uh, remove orphan packages, clear your package cache, and uh, edit repositories if you want to install something custom. Uh, let's say we have a place here to manage our file system. Uh, there's also system components, so you can just tick on if you want Pulse Audio support, Jack support, also support. It looks like by default they're doing Pipewire, uh, which is also pretty cool. That's that's what um, a lot of the more modern distros are doing, and also it's just kind of seen as the modern way of uh, doing audio. Pretty much uh, Pipewire is... Um, pretty much just as compatible as Pulse Audio, but a little bit less bloated than Pulse Audio. Uh, and then let's just look in our settings. Um, switch shells. So it looks like Bash is our default shell. Hmm. I wasn't sure about that when I first uh, started it because if we launch console here, it's telling us that Fish is our default shell. And uh, this is one of the things that I was going to kind of criticize uh, Garuda for because uh, look, I get why they chose shell, uh, the fish shell. Uh, in case you didn't know, it literally stands for the friendly interactive shell. And it's probably one of the most user-friendly and easy to use shells that are out there. Uh, so maybe it does make sense on a distro that's supposed to be easy to use, but it's not fully POSIX compliant. And that can cause some problems if you're writing your own shell scripts that are going to utilize things that are unique to fish, but then maybe not in uh, other shells. Because then if someone on Bash or ZSH tries to use it, that script just won't work right. Um, I'm also like a little skeptical of the core philosophy of fish. Like just how easy does a shell have to be for you to use? Uh, in my opinion, whenever you start using the shell, regardless of what OS you're using it on, that is when the training wheels start to come off. I mean, you just saw uh, between that setup manager and between the Garuda assistant, how easy it is to configure your system without actually having to touch the shell. But when you get into it uh, and you decide to interface with your OS more directly through a shell instead of um, through some sort of GUI abstraction. I just think it's better for you to learn that in a way that's at least POSIX compliant. But anyway, upon closer inspection, it appears that we actually are using Bash, even though it says fish up here. So yeah, that's um, pretty cool. You can also switch to uh, ZSH if you want. Um, let's see, for DNS, oh, you can also enable uh, AdGuard uh, DNS, so that's pretty cool for uh, blocking ads. Let's see, and there's performance tweaks that are in here as well. Hmm, this is really cool. All right, let's look through some of the other options we have. We have the Garuda Gamer. So this is where 
Uh, you can configure all those different uh, gaming things that uh, we saw earlier in the like gaming edition. You don't actually have to download that edition necessarily. It is a much larger ISO because it just comes with these things uh, locally instead of having to download it from the internet. Um, but yeah, you can see all this stuff here. Um, Steam, the Heroic Games Launcher, Lutris or Lutris, not quite sure how you pronounce that one. Um, itch, which best way to play itch.io games. Oh, I don't even know about that. Um, yeah, we got Play on Linux, Wine, Wine Tricks, Proton GE, Proton Tricks, OBS, like so many things that are just essential if you're going to be a gamer on, on any OS, but especially on Linux when we're talking about uh, things like Wine and uh, Proton to provide that compatibility. Uh, let's see what else we have. We have the Garuda Network Assistant. So this is probably for managing like Wi-Fi connections. Um, yeah, nice easy way to manage your network connection. Um, so we've got our Linux drivers here um, and Windows drivers, which we don't need because we're not going to be running Windows. All right, what else do we have here? The Garuda boot options. So this is probably going to be a way to edit Grub, I'm imagining. Uh, yeah, looks like it. So you could boot to Garuda, change the default boot options. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's got so many like GUI front ends for doing all these different things you would normally do with the shell. So it's definitely a just works distro. You're not going to have, it doesn't look like you're going to have to go into console too, too often. Um, we've got a partition manager. We've got time shift. Uh, this is really cool. So this lets you take um, snapshots of your system so that you can easily back up and restore it. Um, what else do we have here? We'll close time shift. We don't need to show that off. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've done a video about time shift in the past. So if you're curious about it, go check that out. Um, we have a system cleaner. So this probably, uh, let's see, is it even gonna run? Okay. Maybe it's because we just installed the system. It's like, hey, you don't need to run that. Uh, add and remove software. Again, something that you would normally do through the terminal, I would normally do through the terminal. You don't have to do it. Um, yeah, and we have Blender to download here. Yeah, so this is all the um, software to add. We've got to go to install, I guess, to start removing things. Um, there's actually not too much on here already. It comes with HTOP. I like that. My uh, favorite um, uh, process manager. Okay, we've got a text editor, Kate, and all these um, ADE Connect so that you can uh, interact with your system via your phone. Uh, KDE Partition Manager. Wait a minute, did I see? Okay, I thought I saw um, G part up there as well. I was about to say, why do we have two partition managers? Uh, console, of course. Um, oh, MPV is already installed, okay. All right, I was I was criticizing them for having uh, VLC listed and not MPV, but hey, they didn't have to list it because they installed the best movie uh, or best media player by default. Let's see, system settings. Yeah, this is man, this is looking really nice. All right, so let's start going through the software that's in our dock down here. Um, of course, there's the welcome console. Let's see what Fire Dragon is all about. All right, so this looks like it's Firefox, uh, just with some additional add-ons installed. So we have the clear URLs add-on. So this is to um, make sure that you don't go to any IP grabbers or anything like that if someone's trying to um, like send you a link to go click on. Pretty useful piece of software. Uh, Canvas blocker, so this helps to block Canvas fingerprinting. Uh, when you go to websites, it sort of helps to uh, prevent them from figuring out what operating system and what browser you're using. Uh, dark reader, so this just gives you the nice uh, dark theme on sites that maybe wouldn't necessarily support it. 
And uBlock Origin is also installed by default. That's that's huge. That's like the universal add-on where you basically know whether or not somebody is like is like um, a super noob or if they're a little bit more advanced, uh, at least as far as browser configs go, is whether or not they have uBlock Origin installed. Uh, so let's open up the dashboard here. Did they go ahead and configure it for us fully? No, they didn't because they're not preventing WebRTC from leaking local IP address. Uh, this is something that can be a bit of a problem. If uh, say you're using a VPN or a proxy in your browser to try and prevent people from figuring out your IP, WebRTC can leak it sometimes. So I don't know. I mean, if there's if there is a way to have this box checked by default, I think that would be the um, better thing to do. Uh, blocking JavaScript, that seems a little bit extreme. Like most regular people using this probably aren't going to want JavaScript blocked because they're going to say, oh no, my browser's broken. It's like, no, just the paradigm of the modern web is broken and everyone uses JavaScript where it's not always necessary. Um, is start page our default? Um, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, it actually, Sir X is the default search engine. Holy moly. Wow, they actually picked like the best possible search engine for default. That's really cool. Man, I'm really, really impressed by this distro so far. And again, it just looks, it looks so awesome. I'm really digging this little <laughs> wiggle when I move the, uh, when I move the um, screen around or when I move this um, program around. Of course, we have Dolphin as the default file manager since we're using uh, KDE. And yeah, all the typical types of folders that you would have, they're all color coded. So that's really nice. Uh, let's see, here's Kate down here. So this is our just regular default text editor, like a uh, notepad, basically. Discard that. Um, let's see, and then there's our time shift, and then there's KDE Connect. Let's go through the applications that we have here. So all applications, um, there is a lot. There's an emoji selector. So I guess that's for um, like copying and pasting uh, smileys, something like that. Let's see, copy to the clipboard, and then we'll open up Kate. Yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, that's that's definitely gonna be an important application. Um, let's go through this some more. Fire Dragon, so of course that's the Firefox. Uh, fish, which I've already talked about fish and gave my opinions on that. Um, let's see, hardware, show hardware topology. Oh, okay. That's pretty neat. So it's actually showing you the different um, cores or threads rather that are connected to my system. And then uh, I believe that this is cache that is shown here. So there's like level one, well, two level ones and then a layer two and then uh, level three. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see, what other applications do we have in here? Let's try to find some more uh, really useful stuff. Okay, Kate, console, MPV, of course. Uh, we've got the Ocular Document Viewer. So you'll want that for viewing your PDFs. And some different QT apps. Uh, reboot, software token. Yeah, there's really not a whole lot that's on here. It doesn't even look like yeah, we don't even have an Office Suite that's installed on it by default. Um, so I guess most of this um, weight, because I can tell that it's that it's kind of heavy. Uh, that's why I gave it so much RAM and, and another CPU thread compared to what I would normally give it. Let's actually go into our, um, let's go into our HTOP and see how much we're using. All right, so we're just under a gigabyte of RAM usage uh, with pretty much nothing else running. Uh, and then we're around 
Looks like we're going between eight and 2% on our CPU. So yeah, I mean, that's kind of, or I guess between 12 and 2%. So yeah, I guess that's to be expected with this much eye candy. You know, obviously it, it might seem a little bit slow and laggy, but that's because I'm using it on a virtual machine. As long as you have, um, you, you might not even need dedicated graphics for this. I, I know it said a uh, video card on, the website, but I would imagine that that also includes integrated graphics. Like if you're, especially if you're using a newer CPU that's gonna have better integrated graphics than something like a Core 2 Duo. Uh, yeah, I would say if you're using a modern system that's not super cheap, like $500 or more, that this would be the perfect distro to uh, run on it. Now let's go ahead and close the window. I really have to say bravo to the Garuda team for creating such a nice modern looking GNU Linux distribution. I'm definitely going to be revisiting this distro once I have a gaming laptop to test it on to see just how easy it is to get started as a gamer on Linux using a distro that will hopefully make that setup very, very easy for me.